I'd like to call to order the Clarkson Independence District Library Board of Trustee meeting for May 9th, 2016 at 546. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Sam Anthony Epson. Michelle Yen. Here. Sam Green. Here. Mary Hamburg. Here. Sally Lamb. Here. Allison McBain Kiesling. Here. Marilyn Pomeroy. Here. Okay. I'll accept the motion for approval of the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda as Second. presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the agenda. Any questions or comments? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Call to the public. We have some public tonight. Yes. Um, I'm from the principal of library board. And this is Julie Sislowitz, and she is going to be our new liaison between your board and our board. So you can expect to see her smiling face from now on. <laughs> but since this is her first meeting, I came so we wouldn't drop her in the pot right off the bat. <laughs> and it's much appreciated. <laughs> um, really, the, the main thing that we have to report is that our recent book sale was a resounding success. Um, there was uh, the Salvation Army picked up any leftover books that we had, but we had more than usual books. Um, also, some of the large print books that we had left went to some of the local assisted living facilities. Um, there was some collaboration with the schools on this because the district decided to um, allow all of the teachers to purchase $25 worth of books at the district expense. So that was an exciting day that tell, Sally can tell you about because she was in the middle of it. Um, and there were just many, many, many much appreciated volunteers. Um, the people that sort books by category through the year, the people that work during the sale as cashiers, salesmen, volunteers, captains, our treasurer and our PR chair who have a lot of work to do during the book sale. Um, and the people who handle refreshments and preview nights, set up and clean up crews. And this year we had um, some fantastic help with that um, during setup. The impact weekend happened at the same time. So we had several people from the impact weekend come with their kids. So we even had some elementary kids helping. <clears throat> and that was really neat to see the families. Um, also, and we have to give a big shout out to the Clarkson High School National Honor Society because they sent a large group of um, students who helped us both at setup and cleanup and did our heavy work for us and cut our setup and cleanup time almost in half. So we really appreciated their help. Um, we always also have to thank the library staff. You can be very proud of your library staff. They always are patient and encouraging and are very flexible during this disruption of their life <laughs> twice, twice a year. <clears throat> and the other thing is, um, and you guys I'm sure know this, but this community is absolutely fabulous with their generosity in terms of donating books and in buying books and audiovisual materials that we have at our book sale. So <clears throat> we, um, grossed almost $10,000 this time. We have to pay the bills, but that's going to pay for a lot of library programs, and we're really thrilled to be able to do that. Thank you. Any questions? Well, that was very succinct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? If not, we'll close the call to the public, and I'll accept a motion on the consent agenda. So moved. A second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we accept the four items on the consent agenda. Is there any item anyone wishes to remove? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Now, library statistics. Um, 
Probably the most important page that I'd have you look at is the percent change from 2015. Um, just a few things I'd like to point out. Um, this is a comparison of April of 2016 to April of 2015. So you'll see we had a 4% increase in visitors, 2% increase in circulation, 2% um, increase in downloads, 35% increase in wireless users, 13% uh, increase in teen and um, children's programs, 67% increase in adult programs. So things are good. Things are up. 3% um, increase in study rooms. Um, just lots of great things going on. So. Thank you. And thank you, Bill, for making those statistics available to us so we can keep an eye, a snapshot of what's going on. Thank you. The library director's report. My report is, is brief because we just had a meeting six days ago. <laughs> um, okay, so for building and grounds, phase two of the library's parking lot reconstruction project is set to take place from mid-May until June 15th. The pre-construction meeting will take place at the library on Wednesday afternoon and will involve the contractors handling the asphalt, concrete, lighting, and irrigation. We should be able to provide more specific information about the construction timeline after that meeting. We do know that the replacement of the structural slab at the library's entrance will require the building to be closed for one to three days to allow the concrete to properly cure. We've been talking about this for several weeks, I know. <laughs> um, at this time, we do not have the dates when this could happen, um, but we will be using the library's website, email, and social media to update the public as soon as we have details. Um, other project updates. Uh, thanks to a grant provided by the Michigan Collaborative for Library Services, the library will be using the Harwood Institute's community conversations techniques as part of our strategic planning process. In late April, we conducted four library conversations to allow the staff, board, and friends to discuss our aspirations for the library. The summary of these conversations is attached. The next step in the process um, is to begin conducting community conversations so that we can integrate our ideas with those of the public. We are scheduled to talk to the City Council about this project in late May and will pursue a variety of methods to involve the public from both the township and the city in the coming months. Um, so I'll, I'll let you go through the library conversations piece at your leisure. Um, and then last, um, in January, the board approved a documents on demand project that will upgrade the library board webpage to improve accessibility of board minutes, packets, and videos. The structure of the site has been created uh, and the IT staff have learned how to upload the documents. The documents have been uploaded in preparation for the new pages to go live soon, and Bill is here this evening, and he'd like to give you a sneak peek. Good. See if you have any comments before he um, prepares it to go live. currently shows a listing of all of the board members, all the meetings, and the links to each of the agenda minutes and uh, packets. When we contracted with Ameriscan to bring up the Documents on Demand service, what they supply is a product where we can actually use this as a, you can actually search all of the minutes all the way going back to 2012. You can bring up any from the very same page. You bring up an agenda from any meeting available um, with a single click. Basically, you, you go, okay, it was this year, it was this meeting, there's the agenda, okay? Uh, the, biggest, the biggest feature that I liked about the way this software works is the ability to search across all of the minutes, all of the meetings, everything you ever wanted to see, um, uh, no matter when it was put in there. So if, uh, so if you want to see how many times the parking lot was mentioned, <laughs> I could do a search here, and then all the minutes that contain, all the items that contain the parking lot show up all at once. And I can bring up any one of them, the agendas, the minutes, and even the packets, the various things, all of that will show up right in there. Um, and so as you see, we have an agendas lit, or you can just, like I said, you can just scan through each of the, each of the different groups. The one thing that I was glad that we were able to get to work with this is actually a link to all of the videos. So we actually put, we took all of the videos that we've been given, we had all of the DVDs, we converted them to digital, and then uploaded them to YouTube, that's what we're using as a, as a storage mechanism, and then designed to build pages that allow us to go straight over to, yeah, different program. 
I'm sorry. That allows us to open that meeting and see and see the and see the video right within right within the page. So this happens to be the October 19th meeting. We have a total runtime listed at the bottom. So in case anybody needed to know how long the meeting was going to be, and and it also, it, it, depending on how big the page is, the, the video does in fact resize, so people on smaller screens can still see the video. That was one of the problems we were having with some of the other stuff. We couldn't resize the video as need be. So those were some of the pieces that is going to make it possible for me to change the way this board meeting page looks. So what I was planning on doing is this section right here, the, where the 2016 here, uh, all the way down here, removing that part, removing that section of the page, because all we need then is the board meeting dates, which will shorten the page up quite a bit, mm -hmm. and then put a link saying, if you want the agendas, packets, and minutes, click here, and it takes us over to this particular website. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, and then again, that just makes it more consistent. The page looks the same no matter what we're looking at, and I think it's just an easier, nav easier to navigate these pages through the so this software. It's also easier for us when we upload them. All we have to do is make sure it's named right and uploaded and puts it where it belongs. Great. Yeah. So, so I mean, the, the, the only the only thing, question I did have I, I did have to write some text up here, and um, I'll give the I'll give Julie the link, and she can show you the link if you want to take a look at the text that's up there and maybe wordsmith it a little bit for me. Um, if you, I don't know what that topic is. Either. Um, Massage it, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, massage it a little bit before I just put before I actually compress those pages and make them into into the one. That would be great. Any questions? I like the I really, really like the the this whole searching across mm -hmm. because what happens is is when these documents get uploaded, they actually get converted into text on their end. So then they index the whole thing, so it's even better than the, the way we could search before. So that was one of my. That was the best part I thought about it, because they're the same company that, that indexed all of the the newspapers for us. Is there a monthly charge to have access to this? Or? It's a yearly charge. Um, if I, it was a. It's five hundred dollars a year. I think we went through that a few months ago when we signed yeah, up for the service. Yeah. It's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Bill, for the update. Now we'll move to regular business. We have Aaron Stevens here tonight from Abraham and Gaffney to talk about our audit. Thank you. I passed out tonight a presentation packet that will help me run through the uh, what I consider the highlights of the report. Um, a couple of general comments. Our thanks to, uh, to Julie and, and Chair Duckworth and the rest of the library staff for their courtesy, cooperation, and assistance. And the field went very well, a very smooth process. Uh, so we appreciate all the help that we received while we were here. We know we're a disruption, so uh, you know, we apologize for that and, and uh, thank you for your help. What I plan to do is highlight what I think are the key areas. I pulled out pages out of the report and, and put them into the packet and that allows me to highlight some things and make some notes. Um, if you have questions, feel free to stop me at any time. We can go through those. But, uh, some of these page numbers have, or some of these pages have two page numbers on them. The page from the middle is, is from the bound report. I'm going to refer to the page number off to the right, it's in red. Uh, so pages one and two of the presentation make up the independent auditor's report. I've highlighted a few sentences here. Uh, the, the financial statements are managers' responsibility, uh, and they're responsible for the, the preparation, the fair presentation of the financial statements, as well as the internal controls over the financial statements. Our responsibilities as your auditor uh, is in the next next paragraph down is to express opinions on the financial statements based on our audit. We express those opinions on page two of the presentation in that first paragraph. In our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects. That phrase, present fairly in all material respects, is what we refer to as an unmodified opinion. We used to call it unqualified, nobody knew what that meant. So now we call it unmodified, it's so much clearer now. Um, but it is the highest level of assurance that we can provide for a set of financial statements. And that's what you want to see as a board, is that unmodified thing. On page three of the presentation, we get into the financial statements themselves. Um, because you are a special purpose government, you had some options under GASB 34 on how to present your financial statements. So. We have this shown as, as the fund level in the left-hand column, some adjustments, and then we get to the full accrual of the government-wide financial statements in the right-hand column. 
Um, so I'm going to focus on the fund presentation, the fund level. Um, you only have one fund, that being the general fund. And this is a snapshot as of December 31st, 2015, of your assets, liabilities, and the difference between the two, which is your fund balance. And your fund balance as of December 31, the total fund balance was $625,465. Now, a portion of that has been earmarked as non-spendable. That non-spendable fund balance of $36,710, that's equal to your prepaid expenses, which is an asset. That's the second number from the top. So an example of a prepaid expense might be an insurance premium. If you, if you paid it in November, you've got November or December expense, but then the other 10 months are going to be prepaid. And so you've already spent it once, you can't spend it again. That's why it's mm -hmm. non spendable. Okay. Uh, what's left over is unassigned uh, $588,755. That's what you have available for future use. That $588,000 compared to your expenses for the year ended December 31, 2015, that represents approximately 34% of those annual expenses. Now that's a little lower than you were last year. Uh, at at 1231-2014, you were at 42%, um, but it decreased because your activity increased. You have, you have a lot higher expenses this year than you had last year. So, um, But that's not a bad thing. You're at 34%. The Government Finance Officers Association recommends uh, maintaining a minimum fund balance equal to uh, two months of normal, what they call normal operations. So two divided by 12 is about 17% and you're at 34. Okay. You're in good shape. On the next page, we get into uh, the statement of governmental fund revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance in the left-hand column, and then the statement of activities in the right-hand column. So again, modified approval in the left-hand column. We make some adjustments to come up to full approval in the right-hand column. Uh, under the accounting standards, we have to present it this way, where we start with expenses, and we add back to that your program revenues, general revenues, and come up with a net change in fund balance on the left-hand column, and a change in that position in the right-hand column. But I think that's a little backwards. That's not the way most people are used to reading financial statements. So if you turn to the next page, we have a more traditional presentation in the budgetary comparison schedule for the general fund. And I've highlighted a couple of numbers here. Total revenues for the year ended 1231, 2015, uh, $1,901,000. That's up 83%. <laughs> but yes. you can guess why. Uh, you know, your millage went from 0.6910 to 1.25 mils. Um, so your total revenue went from just over a million dollars to almost two. On the expenditure side, expenditures of $1,731,413. Uh, that is also up. It's up about 71% from the previous year. And it's, that's uh, across various line items. Um, salaries increased, uh, fringes increased, um, library materials increased, repairs and maintenance quite a bit. Uh, 252,000 uh, uh, repairs and maintenance increased 252,000 hours over the previous year. Uh, professional and uh, contractual services also increased, um, but and for various reasons. But you have more money. You're expanding your programs. You're adding staff, doing renovations, repairs, maintenance, parking lot. Um, so it did increase quite a bit. But you still added to your fund balance. That third number from the bottom, you added $170,100 to your fund balance. On page six of the presentation. I did a four-year bar graph, so I went back to your first year of existence in 2012, which is really only a partial year. You increased your activity in 13 and 14, but then really increased it in 2015. So it gives you a visual perspective of your revenues, expenditures, and fund balance. On page seven, we detail out the composition of your revenue. Um, property taxes is, of course, your largest source of revenue at 94%, almost 94%. Uh, that relationship really didn't change much. Even though the, the dollars did, you were at 90% in 2014. So still a large portion of your revenue is made up of property taxes. On page 8 of the presentation, we have the expenditure detail. Largest use of funds is salaries at uh, 41%. It was 51% in the previous year. Uh, that's followed by repairs and maintenance at almost 19%. Repairs and maintenance were only 7% in 2014. Um, you've got payroll taxes and fringes at 13%, uh, library books and materials at 12%. Uh, library books and materials were only 7% in the previous year. So we did see some, some fluctuation from uh, 14 to 15 on the expenditure side. 
Uh, we did not have any comments or recommendations. Um, we didn't have, we didn't identify any material weaknesses. Uh, we did issue a letter uh, that says that we didn't have any material weaknesses, or we didn't identify any. That's a good thing. Um, so there's not much to go over in that letter. We didn't have any recommendations. But there is one note disclosure that I'd like to, to draw your attention to. That's uh, starting on the next page, pages nine and ten of the presentation. And that's on contingencies. Um, so this is on the OPED. Uh, discussion you're having with the township, as well as the um, property tax collections from the 2012 levy. Uh, so I've combined those into one note disclosure. Um, so one would be a gain contingency, the other one would be technically a loss contingency on the repayment of, uh, of what they claim to be overpaid property taxes. So um, those will have an effect down the road. So we, we don't know exactly when or, or exactly how much. That's why we include them as a contingency note disclosure and not report them as assets or liabilities yeah. at this point. <laughs> but it's an important disclosure, so I did, uh, did want to draw your attention to that. But all in all, like, the library's in good shape financially. Um, smooth audit process. Like I said, no material weaknesses were identified as part of the audit. Doing a great job. No, we thank you very much because as a new entity, we wanted to make sure that we had all of our ducks in a row, so to speak and that we were doing everything that we could to be transparent and up to date with financial requirements. So we thank you very much for your hard work in analyzing what we've done. Thank you. Yes, thanks. And your clear presentation, I understood it. Yes. <laughs> we're definitely in favor of that. <laughs> Behind it. I'll accept a motion to approve the audit as presented. I move to approve the library audit as presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the audit as presented. Any comments or questions before the vote? If not, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Item number two, considerably briefer, lawn mowing. <laughs> okay. um, Independence Township DPW has been responsible for mowing the library's lawn for many years. DPW Director David McKee has proposed renewing the lawn care service for the library for the 2016 season at the same rate as the 2015 season, which is the same rate as the 2014 season. <laughs> um, this quote is the hourly pay rate of the workers at 11.50 plus a small additional fee, 6.50 per hour, to cover gas and equipment maintenance. The DPW would put the library on their regular weekly mowing schedule. Additional one-time lawn work, such as sidewalk edging prior to the garden walk, could be done up upon request and would be billed at the same rate of $18 per hour per worker. Okay, nothing new here. <laughs> Any comments, questions? I'm glad we can keep it at the same rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He felt like it was, uh, when I talked to um, Mr. McKee, he said it, he felt like it was um, good governmental collaboration. He wanted to keep it at the same rate. Excellent. In that case, I will accept a motion. I move to approve lawn mowing contract submitted by the Independence Township DPW as presented. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the lawn mowing contract submitted by the DPW. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item, shelving. This one's a little more, this one's a little more extensive. <laughs> Um, the library's head of adult services has been working on a significant project to maximize collection space throughout the adult and teen areas. Due to a reduction in the production of print materials, uh, print periodicals, and the addition of e-magazines to the library's collection, the current shelving and storage of periodicals can be transitioned into standard shelving. To do this, we would remove the magazine storage modules and replace them with standard shelves so that the reference materials can be moved to this wall. So essentially what we're doing is we're kicking the brackets. We're already there, kicking little pieces, the boxes that the magazines live in, taking them off and putting on new shelves. Okay. In a nutshell. Um, let's see. As most libraries are reducing print periodicals, there is no longer a market for these modules, unfortunately. So they would be discarded as part of this project. 
Next, the area where reference has been housed will have special sloped bases installed to allow books on the lowest shelf to tip up for um, improving readability of the spines. That's good. Yes. <laughs> I can get down to see them. It's getting back up after we look at them. <laughs> This area would house large print materials. Shifting large print to this area will allow the collection to grow and create space to shift the entire collection, providing additional shelving in the teen area. So essentially, um, we're moving, if you can picture all the shelving going this way and this way, we're, taking, we're moving everything this way and then shifting the whole thing around um, in order to make more room. Yes. Um, lastly, shelf backs would be purchased to install in the youth, teen, adult, and AV, AV areas. While this added shelving feature is hidden, it greatly improves the shelving by preventing materials from being pushed through to the opposite side or falling between the shelving units. This protects the materials, maintains the orderliness of the collection, and improves safety. In other words, you can't push the books off onto the people on the other side, <laughs> which does happen more than we would like to have happen. Um, library Design Associates is the company that handled the library's space planning project in 2008. This is a specialty company that focuses on library shelving and maximizes collection capacity. Their quote includes the cost of all necessary shelving for this project, shipping, disassembly, installation, and removal of unneeded pieces. That was my question. The removal of the unneeded pieces. Yep, so they're good. going to do that they for us. They will take care of that for us. All right. It's not currently a budgeted project. The needed funds could be transferred from undesignated revenue to line 975 to complete the project. Can everybody picture this? Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, will we have any more hard copies of magazines? Uh, we will still, right now we have actually two walls. Right. of, of yes. periodicals. We've already moved the periodicals, so it will not reduce the periodicals we currently have. Okay. But we had to, I wanted, I didn't bring this project forward until we had determined that the parking lot price was set. So it's been sitting empty while we waited right. to make sure we could afford to do the project, which now we've decided that we can. So um, it will not reduce the periodicals at all. Okay. Um, it will just move, it will just free up that wall and we will start moving the, the collections. <coughs> Always an exciting task. <laughs> <laughs> to a library. To a library. <laughs> Some of the several of us have been in the field. So, oh, yes, that's very exciting. All right, do we have a motion for this project? I move to approve the bid for national restoration to complete Ooh. the oh, library design. Uh, right, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve the bid from Library Design Associates to complete this project and approve a budget adjustment of $14,688 from undesignated revenue to line 975 billion. I second. second. We'll go ahead. I, I've already had one. <laughs> I'll second Gary. <laughs> Fight for that second. <laughs> All right. Are there any questions or comments? So this is our second larger project of the year. Do we know when? Um, there's about four to six weeks lead time on bringing in the shelving. I was kind of hoping that it would get here in time so that if we do have that three-day closure for the, the concrete oh. lab, that we could do some of that shifting while we were closed. Yeah. I think that might be a little optimistic. My fingers are crossed. OK, good. <laughs> that would be, that would be very, really be good. Yep. I'm well, it good. makes the best use of the time. If we're going to be down, that's the time to try and do something. move mm -hmm. things. Yes, yes. Sure. Oh, that's good. All right, if there are no further questions or discussion, all those in favor of approving the bid from Library Design Associates to complete the project and approve the budget adjustment of $14,688 from undesignated revenue to the building number, which is 975. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. And now we'll move outside. Last year, the library did an RFP to have the retaining wall along the southeast corner of the library building rebuilt. National Restoration was awarded the project with the lowest bid. They did an excellent job correcting the drainage and restacking the wall. In correcting the damage wall, the library director discussed with the contractor some options for some additional finish work uh, to slightly extend the wall in preparation for a garden to be installed in that area and add a slab allowing a step down onto the lawn from the fire uh, door exiting the meeting room, so right outside that door. 
These features would improve safety um, at this emergency ex exit as well as allow this door to be safely used for children to move from the meeting room onto the lawn for outdoor activities in nice weather. Nice. National Restoration has provided the attached quote to complete the work requested by the library director. This is not currently a budgeted project because the library director wanted to await the completion of the bid awards for the key pieces of phase two of the parking lot reconstruction. There's parking lot reconstruction added into that search <laughs> from the agenda search that Bill was showing you. See parking lot yet again. Um, in case those bids came in higher than anticipated, this will be a positive finishing touch to the reconstruction of the library's southern uh, facade as well as the improvement to safety. So just in a nutshell of what we want to do that, the retaining wall, when they restacked it in, in the process of, of improving it, basically we ran out of stones and it didn't go quite far enough because they, they stacked it better than what it had settled significantly. So now we need to add on a little bit in order to make it look more finished. And then just outside this door, just to clarify, when you step out, you'll, you would either step down into um, a, a dirt area and now into bushes since the garden was approved to be thin, um, or if you turn um, to your left and step down, that's a rock mulch bed. So we would have that rock mulch bed removed and we would have a slab for them and you could step down easily and then onto the lawn. So it would be a safe exit. So and less muddy. Right. And less <laughs> muddy. That's it. Yeah. Good thought. Yeah, I think that's going to work out great mm -hmm. rather than stepping into a prickly bush. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty bad there for a while. Yeah. Especially if one is exiting that door in an in emergency hurry. situation. Yeah, be, the yeah. smoother the better. Yes. Fortunately we've not had that experience, but um, now when the children leave the, the room in order to do outdoor activities, they go out and around the main and it would be very nice if they could just go straight out onto the grass from here. <laughs> yes. So that'll be a nice addition as well. Excellent. I'll accept a motion. I'm, I'm, go ahead. No, go ahead, Mary. I, I move to approve the bid from National Restoration to complete the retaining wall and add a step to the meeting room fire exit as presented and approve a budget adjustment of $4,500 from undesignated revenue to line 975 building. Second. Second. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we finish this project and have a budget adjustment of 4500 from undesignated revenue to line 975. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. You notice that our undesignated revenue is dropping. Yes. <laughs> 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 for very good cost. Yes. That's right. That's what it was there for. And that concludes our agenda for this evening. So I will accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at six, what is that? I can't read Not it from here. here. 618? Yes. 618. Thank you all very much.